Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Within the last 24 hours, Adobe has released an update to Lightroom. For Creative Cloud users, it's 2015.1. For people using the standalone version of Lightroom, it's 6.1. Now both of these versions are going to get a bunch of bug fixes. They're going to get some new lens profiles, new camera support, some tethering support. But those that are using the Creative Cloud version are going to enjoy a couple new features. Why they didn't include this with the 6.1 version, people using the standalone version, I don't know. And I don't know if uh, those of you that are using the standalone version are going to get these new features sometime in the future. So hopefully you do. The new features are a new dehay slider, and I'm going to demo this in a minute. Uh, if you have a scene that is hazy, it could help minimize the haze. Or if you're getting creative and you want to add like a haze look to an image, you could even add haze to the scene with the slider. Also, something I've wanted them to get for a long time is the local adjustments. That would be uh, the, the uh, brush, the graduated filter, and the radial filter are now going to have white and black sliders. So we could adjust the whites and blacks locally localized with these adjustments and I'm going to demo that in a minute too. Now first of all I'll jump off I, I was looking through my images and I really don't have a lot of images with haze and it's probably because I don't like the look I don't like haze so if it's hazy out I'm probably shooting macros or something like that but I did find a few I have this one here uh, with this boat and these windmills and you can see it's a little hazy so you're in the develop mod module on the right hand panel you go down to the effects tab and you can see down here at the bottom there is now a dehaze slider and I mentioned you could add haze if you wish you could move this to the left and you can see it will make the scene look hazier than it already is now of course, that's if you're creative and you want to, you know, add a little haze, that's fine. But in this image here, we want to minimize the haze. So I'm going to take this slider and I'm going to move it to the right. And what I found is just a little bit does a pretty good job. You can see I'm at plus 34, and it did a really decent job of minimizing the haze. I'm going to turn it off and then turn it on. And you can see it, it looks pretty good. Now what it did do, it did increase, increase contrast dramatically. And what I'm trying to figure out now is where I'm going to put this slider in my workflow. Um, I'm thinking that for me at least, I, if I have an image that's hazy and I want to minimize the haze, I'm going to do the dehaze first, then go up to the basic panel and adjust it, and then go to the tone curve and adjust it. Uh, because I'm thinking that this dehaze slider may put too much contrast in an image and then I'm going to end up going back to the basic panel, back to the tone curve to readjust the whites, the blacks, the contrast uh, to, you know, uh, to have a little less contrast overall. So that's what I'm thinking I might do and I encourage you to experiment with your images and decide how you're going to incorporate it in your workflow. Now this slider is far from perfect though. Uh, let me show you a couple things. Now I have another similar image here with the windmills and water and we're going to go to the dehay slider and I'm going to move it to the right. And you can see I'm going to move it around the same vicinity I moved the last one. It's at plus 34. It did a decent job. But if you look closely up here in the left corner you can see any little sensor spot you might have had it really gets like blown up because of this dehay slider. Let me reset it to zero. And you can see, you can barely see it now. But as I move it to the right, you can see it's very prominent. So you, you really have to be um, very diligent going through your image, especially if you have a landscape with an expansive sky. Go through the image and make sure that you clone out or use the spot removal tool to get rid of any sensor spots because you're really calling attention to them with this dehay slider. Also be aware that if you really push it too far, it really starts to vignette and it adds a lot of noise to the image. Not just sensor spot noise, but just noise noise. So um, just be aware of that. Um, so, you know, you sparingly, I think, is the best uh, recommendation I could give on this. Now, this is a universal adjustment. When I 
move that slider to the right, I'm adjusting the entire image. What if you have an image something like this one, where the haze is really back here. The rest of the image is pretty, you know, haze-free. Now, it's not a great shot. I just have them take a snapshot of these bike riders. But we'll go down, we'll go to the Effects tab, and we'll go to the Dehaze slider, and I'll push it to the right. Now, you can see it's, it is minimizing the haze um, pretty well. It's doing okay. But it's saturating the last of the, the rest of the image. So the greens are a little greener. So again, I may have to go back to the basic panel if I don't like that saturation. And I may have to push saturation down a little bit to compensate for what I'm doing with this dehaze slider. Now, those of you that watch my videos know that in the past I've talked about haze in an image and what you could do to get rid of it or at least minimize it. And what we're going to do, I'm going to put the dehaze slider back to zero so we're right back where we started. And those of you may remember that you could use an adjustment brush. And what you would do is you would have contrast turn pretty far up, clarity pretty far up, uh, turn auto mask off in this case, uh, and feathering not too high. And really all you got to do is paint in this like enhanced contrast that you know I have with this brush adjustment like that and you could really quite effectively minimize the haze let me turn the brush off it's going to take us oh no there it did pretty quick so there is without the brush stroke I just did and there is with the brush stroke I just did. So it's just affecting the brush. I'm going to go over that and you can see the overlay is where I brushed. Let's just brush right there for the heck of it. Okay, so that did a pretty good job. Uh, again, there is before and there is after. So keep that in mind. If you uh, don't want to use the dehaze slider because it's a universal adjustment affecting every pixel in the image. You want to just adjust a certain part of the image. Go to the brush, turn contrast up, clarity up, and brush away the haze. Now, I did mention that these local adjustments, that would be the adjustment brush, the radial filter, and the graduated filter, now have a white slider and a black slider. Now, they affect the pixels identically to the slider that is in the basic panel, but some of the little tricks I taught you do not work with these sliders. Uh, specifically, remember if you want to get that exact like textbook white point and black point, I mentioned that you could hold the shift key in and double click on the word whites and double click on the word blacks and they'll automatically adjust where you need them. That does not work with these local adjustments. What you'll do um, it just won't do anything really. Also, you could hold the Alt or Option key when you're in the basic panel in and click down. And remember, if you're adjusting whites, the screen will turn black and a little white will bleed through when you're adjusting it. You could adjust your white point that way. And similarly for blacks, when you hold that Alt or Option key in, the screen turns white. And when you adjust blacks, a little black will bleed through. And then you could adjust your blacks to taste that way. That does not work at all either with these local adjustments. Now, a trick you could do though to get an idea of what you're adjusting or how you're adjusting them is I would turn on the clipping indicators. Now to refresh your memory, the clipping indicators are in the histogram here. They're a little triangle here and a little triangle here. You could just click on them one by one if you wish. A quicker way is to hit the J key on your keyboard and you toggle them on and off. Right now they're on and right now they're off. You could see as you look at them on, they have that little square um, around them. Now, the clipping indicators are on. So now I could come in and adjust the whites. And as you could see, as I move it to the right, when it's clipping, red will appear on the screen. Similarly, for blacks, if I push those down, when black is clipping, blue appears on the screen. So this could aid you when you adjust these sliders. You you know, maybe don't want anything to clip. So you could adjust your blacks and back it off until all that blue or most of the blue disappears. And for whites, you would back it off until the 
red disappears. Now, I, I would um, remind you to remember to turn the clipping indicators off because you'll go on to other images and the clipping indicators will be on and they might drive you crazy. So hit J again, it toggles them off. So that is how I would adjust these new whites and blacks sliders that are in the um, adjustment brush, the radial filter, and the graduated filter. And that's it. I just, uh, for this um, video, I just wanted to go over these few new features that are in the Creative Cloud version of this update. Again, I'm not sure why it's not in the standalone version. Hopefully it will be soon. Um, I, I really don't know. I haven't read anything of why it's not included, so your guess is as good as mine. If you guys have any questions, always feel free to ask. I appreciate everyone watching my videos. Really, thank you very, very much. I'll talk to you guys soon.